Hey guys, Richard Blaine here. Thanks for stopping by my Easy Cooking channel tonight. Tonight I'm going to cook a Bengali dish called Chicken Jafrezi. Okay? It's a simple curry dish. It's very popular in India, Pakistan, and in the UK. And I'm going to make Chicken Jafrezi for a subscriber of mine. Her name is Morella Blaze. And the reason I'm making this dish for Morella Blaze is she's been following me around since the beginning and she literally watches and comments on every one of my videos she likes my recipes especially the ones that are hot and spicy because to tell you the truth I'm hot and spicy and, and so is she okay but she follows me around and she watches my videos and Every week I make a video, she has a positive comment, something she likes about it. Maybe she goes to a restaurant in the UK where she is and has that dish, or she makes it at home. But she's been with me since the very beginning. She's been a great supporter. And so she asked me to cook a dish for her for her birthday this month. And I said, what would you like me to make? And she said, chicken jalfrezi. Okay, now chicken jalfrezi is a dish that is influenced by the British. Like I said, it's a Bengali dish, but way back when the British invaded and subjugated, subjugated Bengal, okay? The tribe in Bengal was called the Mogs, okay? The Mogs had their own way of cooking, but since they were subjugated by the Brits, the Brits occupied their territory and enslaved a certain percentage of the Mogs and made the mugs do all kinds of insundry labor and some of the labor that the mugs had to do was cook and the Brits, the British, taught the mugs to cook the kinds of foods they liked to eat because during the occupation the British would throw lavish parties okay and so the mugs had to learn how to cook the kinds of foods the British would like to eat okay now, as with any large party on that kind of a scale, okay, there would always be leftovers, okay, and when there were leftovers, the British would tell the mugs, do something with it, just do something with it, don't let it go to waste. And that's when the mugs got to become very creative with their cooking. So they started introducing the herbs and spices of Bengali cooking into the foods that they were making for the British and came up with some excellent dishes and the thing is is that the Brits loved what the Bengalis were doing, what the mobs were doing with their food and one of the dishes that was created was this dish chicken jalfrezi. It's a lovely curry dish and I'm gonna make it for Morella Blaze. Happy birthday Morella, thank you for following me. I'm making jalfrezi for you. So as usual with YouTube we know it's more than 15 minutes. Let's get going. I'll see you on the other side. All right, first things first, guys. In order to make this homemade curry, the first thing we're going to do is add some mustard seeds to some oil. I'm going to turn it down on medium, okay? Medium to medium high. Now, when those mustard seeds begin to pop, then I'm going to add some coriander, some turmeric, a couple other spices, okay? But what we want to do is we want to get the mustard seeds popping, okay, on medium, okay, and they're just about at that point. Okay, now, the mustard seeds began to pop, so I lowered the heat to medium, and right now, I'm going to add some ground turmeric, there we go, coriander, Cumin into that oil. It's going to smoke a little bit, and that's okay. Then we're going to add the onions. Okay. Now this is a combination of red onion and shallot. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Mmm. See that lovely yellow color from the curry? That's coming from the turmeric. Oh, yeah. All right, now, I'm going to cook these onions on medium until they're soft and nice and translucent. 
and then we're going to move forward. Alright, at this point, we're going to add a little bit of salt for the flavor layer. We're not going to add any black pepper, just a little bit of salt because there's black pepper in the curry we're going to be using. And I'm going to mix this in. And I'm going to cook these onions for about another minute or two. And then we're going to move on to the next step. Alright guys, so the onions, as you can see, have softened and browned. Okay? So they're right at that point. Okay? So, I'm going to add in my garlic. That's right, get it off. I'm not going to waste any of that garlic. Okay? And I'm going to add in my ginger. Come on out. There we go. Oh, oh the fragrance in here is fantastic. Alright, so I got the onion and the shallots and the garlic and the ginger all coming together in this here wok. Alright. Just want to get it coated. And then in go the chilies. Okay, Morella, she likes hot and spicy. So here you go. This here's a combination of red and green chili, fresh with the seed. Now, if I need to make it hotter, I will later with some crushed red flake. But for right now, I'm going to get this going on medium high. We haven't even gotten to the meat yet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Just a touch of chicken stock. Okay. To keep the curry from burning. We want the curry thick. Okay. We want the curry thick, but we don't want it to burn. So we just use a little bit of chicken stock every now and again to keep it from sticking. You'll see Jalfrezzi recipes that say, use water, but why waste your time? You're making chicken Jalfrezzi. Use chicken stock. Okay? Just a little bit. Just a splash. That's all. There we go. Keeps the curry thick, flavorful, and stops it from sticking. There you go. Alright, now, dropping some bell peppers okay one green one red okay and I'm gonna sweat these down in this mixture and then we're gonna move on to the next step okay so the red and green peppers have been cooking in here for about three minutes on medium high and we're gonna add our chicken okay there we go Just going to dump it in there, okay? Alright. Now, you will find that a lot of Jalfrezzi recipes use chicken breast. And I find chicken breast to be really, really boring when it comes to curries and other dishes because they lack the requisite flavor necessary for the dish. Whereas chicken thighs, which happen to be my favorite part of the bird, have the darker meat and the richer flavor. Okay, and so the thigh's been added. And now we're going to add some tomato. All right. Some chopped tomato. Pony, my favorite. You guys all know that I like pony. All right. I'm going to get that tomato underneath everything. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Get that tomato nice and mixed in. All right. Now I'm going to bring the heat back up to a high because I want to get all these ingredients 
boiling and then I'm going to reduce it to a simmer. There we go. Oh, this is lovely. It smells so good in here, it's ridiculous. Okay. In the meantime, we're going to add the rest of our chicken stock. Okay. Because at this point, nothing is going to stick to the wok as there's sufficient liquid and we are going to reduce this liquid in this curry recipe. Okay. So I'm going to bring this up to a boil again and then back down to a simmer and we'll move forward. Okay guys, so the masala came to a boil and now I've got it down to a simmer. And it's going to stay here at this simmer for about 30 minutes, give or take, maybe a little longer. I'm going to add an additional ingredient. You don't usually see this in Gianfrezzi, but I'm putting it in there because I think it allows the flavors to pronounce. And that ingredient is sugar. Okay. About two tablespoons sugar for about three pounds of meat plus all these other ingredients. And I think the sugar helps the flavors to pronounce themselves. Okay. This is not a standard ingredient in Joffrezzi, but it does make it taste good. It'll give just the slightest, slightest smack of sweetness to that pepper. Just the slightest, slightest smack. Okay. Okay. Now, next to that, I'm going to add in some garam masala. Okay. What I love about Indian cooking, Bengali cooking, okay, is that the recipes are pretty much very simple, but the flavors and the textures are so very complex, okay, with a myriad of herbs and spices. So here goes garam masala, okay, and I'm going to mix that in good. Oh, God, it smells so good in here. My neighbors are going to be banging down the door again, which means i got to feed them. And then I'm going to add some chicken masala, okay? This is a pre-measured spice mixture that you buy in the Indian grocery, just like garam masala, and it's called chicken masala, and it is geared strictly toward chicken curry dishes. Okay, a lot of extra spices in it, fenugreek and things like that, that are going to bring out the flavors of this dish. It's just going to be amazing, okay? So, I have the curry, I have this Joffrezzi, okay, and it's sitting here, and I'm going to put it on the medium high, and I'm going to let this simmer for about 30 minutes. Okay guys, here it is. Okay, chicken chalfrezzi. This has been cooking for about two hours. It's thickening up really nice. I came across some chicken legs. Okay, so I put some chicken legs in there to go with the thighs. Okay, and it's thickening up really nice. And as a last touch, I'm going to add some lime juice, okay? I'm gonna get that lime juice in there and I'm gonna simmer this for about another 30 minutes. Get that chicken nice and tender. Those thigh pieces, nice and tender. Those legs, nice and tender. And then we're gonna serve this up. So I'll see you in about 30 minutes. Okay guys, there it is. Chicken Joffrezzi, chicken curry. Okay, I've made this for Morella Blaze for her birthday. I hope she's enjoying it. I hope she enjoys it. It's nice and hot and spicy, just the way she likes it. If you like curry dishes, if you like making chicken curry or curry dishes, you gotta try this dish right here. Chicken Joffrezzi. I'm glad you stopped by. I hope you make this dish.
and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.